Hello and welcome back to the top 101 board games of all time. So this is, I'm going to call them episodes. So we had episode one where we had 101 through 92. I got a little flubbed with the numbers there, but it's all good. It's all still in order. So this time I'm going to hit with an extra one because I'm going to do 91 through 81. So a little bit of extra bonus there. Um, so if you didn't see the first video, go back and check it out. If, uh, or don't, your choice, but if you do, go check it out, then come back to this one. Um, if you did see the first video, then we're just going to roll right into it. This is just me going through my top 101 board games of all time. And so without further ado, let's get rolling. So I got number 91, which should have been on the last one, but I'm, you know, that's okay. Well, you know, hey, I'm an amateur. Let's, let's be honest. I'm not a professional. I don't do this for a living. Uh, so, you know, sue me. So anyway, so. Moving on, number 91 here, A Few Acres of Snow. Uh, Mr. Martin Wallace uh, is the designer of this one, an old tree frog game, so old publisher. Um, this is a two-player only uh, card-driven war game set in kind of, um, you know, the 1700s, late 1700s type uh, time. And you just, you're, you're building, kind of building a deck um, where you're using different cards to explore and go out and try to do different things out on the map. And your opponent's obviously trying to do the same thing. And you can score victory points for certain areas that you have under control. Um, but eventually, you will also can start attacking your opponent. And when you do that, you start a kind of a battle system that's really unique in this game. And if you like... Uh, card-driven war games, uh, two-player ones, and you've never played this one, you got to put this on your must-play list because it's really, really excellent. And really, it's probably as low as it is on my top 100 just because I haven't gotten to play it as much here lately. I really got to get this one back to the table, but it is excellent. So that's my number 92. Uh, I'm, I'm 91. Well, I got to figure out how to get these numbers straight. Number 91, A Few Acres of Snow. So now, my number 90 is going to be a Big box Euro, heavy, heavy Euro game. And boy, this game right now, boy, it sometimes it gives me, whoo, boy. I'll just roll right into it. So there we go, number 90, Tricarion. And, oh, with, and expansions galore. Uh, good old Mind Clash games. Um, this one, I'll tell you, it is a brain burner, even for me, you know, and I'm no big deal for most of the time with heavy games. But the lovely part about this game is, when you first start, you've got to pick your different locations that you want to go to um, before you even get to go to them. And then you flip them all up, and then you get to say, oh, well, that person's heading downtown. I really need to get downtown, so i got to go there first. Oh, wait, I really got to hit the magic shop part first. Oh, wait, I really got to do a performance area first. Oh, which one do I do? And then when you go there, you're going to get certain action points the earlier you go there really really good it actually has a two-player uh, little expansion in it that made a two-player game a little bit better where it, it kind of blocks some spots off and stuff really excellent good crunchy fun i'll always say i wish that the performance part there was a maybe a little bit difference i wish there was something more is what i've always felt about this game it's not bad it works and the game is really really good for what it is uh, I just, I wish that was always a little bit better. But nonetheless, my number 90, Tricarion. All right. So my number 89, oh boy, talk about a heavy card-driven, I guess you could say even war game. Oh, here I stand. Whew. Now this one right here, this is, this is way too low for this game to be. This should be much higher up on my top 100 of all time. But it's hard to get to the table. And in fact, this, I've only played this, I'm going to be honest with you, really one time. And it still jumps up this high because it was so good. And I can just see where this is just, oh my goodness, so amazing. And there's a couple of other, there's a prequel game to it that's uh, The Virgin Queen. And then there's a new one coming out, and the name escapes me right now. It's supposed to be a little bit quicker of time, and I think uh, it's supposed to be just plays four players, um, or up to four players, which I'm kind of looking forward to that. But this one, I got to get it back to the table here in 2024. That is a must. Um, 
it's one of those, I know one of the, uh, one of our listeners, a uh, PC, he's always been like, Hey, this is on my, uh, shelf, shelf of shame. And I'm like, maybe this year at PPCon, we're going to get this one in. Cause I really, really like this game and I want to get it back to the table. Uh, so that's going to be my number 89. Here I stand. So, uh, next on my list is going to be two classic games. And one of them I don't even own anymore because I just don't get it to the table. Um, and in fact, I, I gave it to a good friend of mine, Corey, and said, you know, hey, you keep it, you know, and we'll play it. And we've played it a few times and he's got it and he's got the expansions and everything for it. When I was first introduced to this game, it was on its third edition, and that is Twilight Imperium. Now, I've debated whether or not I should have this in my top, you know, 100 of all time. But when it really comes down to it, this used to be my number one game. And I loved it. I love the interaction. I love the building of your, you know, of, of your kind of your world and getting all the ships out. I love the technology part. I like the strategy of the, of the different uh, uh, strategy cards that you play. Everything about this game is so much fun. I used to have like a day would be set out and like five, six, seven of us would get together and it would be an all day event. You know, we'd set up in, in a garage and we'd have like a whiteboard marking all the objectives off and everything just was, uh, was amazing. And in fact, at one point, a friend of mine built like a big lazy Susan that we could put the map out on so that you could even spin. I mean, just we went all out for this. Anyway. And I still enjoy playing this. I probably enjoy playing this maybe once, maybe twice a year. And I think there's a lot of other games that I would prefer now to play. But I got to throw it in there and give it its due. Uh, so that's that's going to be my number uh, 88, which is going to be Twilight Imperium. And, you know, like I said, third edition, fourth edition, doesn't matter. Same type of game, just, you know, uh, different, you know, new and updated stuff. So there we go. So Twilight Imperium. So my next is the the game that I, so when I was younger, I would say played a lot of board games with the family and stuff when we're talking Monopoly Clue and all those kind of things. And then as, when I got into college, I remember, you know, I used to play Risk a little bit. But the game that really cemented me to get back into the hobby, this is a little bit before good old uh, Subtle of Catan, but that kind of got me into games. And now some people say, well, this is not a board game, and I will agree with you. I mean, it's not really a board game because it's just a card game, but there's a lot of just card games on my list. And this one is the granddaddy, and I, to this day, am still in shock, in shock of how popular it is. Both of my boys, who, you know, obviously were not even born when I started playing Magic the Gathering, or oh, the spoiler there, I guess I hadn't even said it yet, Magic the Gathering, both of my boys were not even born yet, and now both of them, you know, they play it all the time, and, you know, one's 23, one's 21, you know, and and, and they love Magic, and it's just crazy, you know, and I've got, uh, you know, I, don't, I don't really even own, like, specific Magic cards anymore, a long time ago I sold them, um, but uh, I still have some of these old championship decks, uh, this one here, these are back from like 88, or excuse me, uh, it's not 88, 98, 99. Um, yeah, so this one here happens to be from Tokyo. Um, but uh, I keep these things because I still really enjoy them, and I still have time where I get to play occasionally, and I play with my kids a little bit. They, they play that new format, Commander. Not really my, you know, my, I grew up in the just the dual one-on-one, play a lot of tournaments. I uh, got to go a lot of places. Got to go to Tokyo, Japan, playing Magic. I got to go to Barcelona, Spain. Uh, you know, got to go all over the U.S. And so Magic still has a soft spot in my heart. Uh, not necessarily am I out to look to play it very much, but if somebody ever came up to me and said, hey, I got a couple of decks you want to play, heck yeah, let's go, let's rock it. So, uh, so that's going to be number 87, Magic the Gathering. So now we're up to 86. And... This one's tricky for me because sometimes I think, well, this game gives me the same feel, and this game gives me the same feel. Well, when I start talking about trick-taking games, honestly, yes, I mean, they're all going to give me some of the same feel, but I feel like each one of them kind of has, you know, like I like them, but then there's ones I like a lot more. So I kind of separated these a little bit, and some people will be like, well, you're not separating that, but you're separating these. 
Well, you know what? Hey, it's my list. I'll do what I want to. But so number, uh, so I don't mess up. I'm going to look here. 86 is going to be nine lives. So, all right. So good old nine lives. Um, this one is, um, I'm terrible sometimes with the designers if I don't know them. Uh, I know it's a Takiyaki, Takiyaki Shinzawa. I'm sorry. I know I butchered that terribly. But, and produced by uh, All Play Games. And if you just recently saw, I had a video up not too long ago with uh, Bacon. Um, and All Play Games, boy, they've been knocking it out of the park here lately with a lot of great games uh, that they've been doing. And they're all in this kind of cool, small box uh, type size. Um, a couple more are coming up on my list. So anyways, but this one's Nine Lives. Trick-taking game where you can see the back of the cards. So you can see what colors everybody has. But before the round, you're going to bid on where you think, um, how many how many tricks you're going to take. And you can either kind of hedge your bet where you'll be like, oh, I think it'll be between two and three. Or you can do just a single and say, yep, I'm going to hit three. I think three or eight. I think it gives you the option. Um, but then, so as the game goes along, everybody knows exactly where you're trying to hit. So you're trying to score, you know, you're trying to get your tricks, but not get too many or not get too less. Great little game. Um, in fact, also, whenever you win a trick, you also have to take one of the cards from the middle. So you never have an idea when the game is going to end necessarily uh, on how many tricks there are. Really fun, really enjoyable. You know, I could throw in a lot of different trick takers that would be in this same kind of feel for me. You know, I've you know, enjoyed spades. I enjoy hearts. You know, some of the some of the big ones there. Um, I've got a few that maybe are more popular that I do have further on down in our list. But for this one right here, number 86, nine lives. So number 85 is going to be, uh, this is one of those that I'm going to kind of combine and say, these two games kind of have the similar feel to me. My wife likes this one better, so that's why I kept this one, and that's why I'm kind of showing it, but really, honestly, in the same vein, and that's, I'm going to say Key Flower, but I'm right now, I'm also going to say I really enjoy this uh, one here, Key to the City of London. So both of those give me the same feel, has the same auction mechanic. Uh, this is really cool in the fact that you have these tiles out in the middle and you're going to bid for them. And the first time somebody, and you have meeples is what your kind of currency is, and they're different colors. And when you first put a meeple out there, let's say you put a red meeple out there, now that's the only currency, that red meeple, that can be bid on that one. Oh, I've got 13 yellow ones. Doesn't matter. This only takes red. And that's such a neat and unique part of how to, you know, kind of, instead of just money, it's it's these different meeples. Really love it. Um, I don't like to play it at too high a player counts because you have to kind of keep track of everybody's tableau because each turn you like them then move those tiles into yours. And so I really like this, you know, maybe at the three, maybe four player count. But still, such a great game. Uh, whether Key Flower, which I've never got to play any of the expansions, and people tell me a couple of one of them is amazing. I'd like to try it. But this right here is the Key to City of London, which I really like. It actually has a little bit of more of a simplistic way that it does it, but just some small changes. Really like them. So that's right there is going to be my number 85, uh, Key Flower. All right. So now we're on to number 84. And any fans of the podcast, especially the early podcast, um, there was a time where I was talking about a game and I could not remember what the name was. And so I was like, hey, I'm going to that game with the with the wooden bowl. And, uh, and everybody, oh, the game with the wooden. And then it became a big joke. And for any of you who have never seen uh, or heard uh, Ben Maddox, uh, he is the. He does the podcast uh, Five Days for Doomsday. Uh, great. Does a great job. Also has a YouTube channel. You know, check him out. He's absolutely amazing. Um, but he did a recording for us at one point where it was like, the game with a wooden bowl. And yeah, so down in history. Like I said, your fan, you'll, you'll know that. But nonetheless, moving on for anybody else who's like, stop talking about this. I don't even know what it is. Let's move on. And we will. And that is going to be Mogul. So, uh, I feel like i got to pull it out just to show you the wooden bowl. <laughs> so, it's got a big old wooden bowl. All you do in this is, so how the game is played is, on your turn, you have two choices. You can either bow out of the auction for the cards that you're using to, you know, do things to score points, 
or you can put one of your little chits in the bowl to keep in the round. And obviously the longer, you, you know, if you pass out, then you don't get anything. And if you're the one, one left, you get to choose what card you want, which is obviously going to increase your chances to win. So really the wooden bowl, all it is for is for you to throw little, little chits, little, uh, I don't know, little silver discs into, but it makes a great sound when you go ding, 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 and they keep throwing them in there. So anyway, so that, uh, mogul, if you like, like it's, a, it's kind of a, oh, I don't really like it, you know, like how long till you last, almost like a no thanks type of thing where you keep putting your chit in type of thing. So, uh, anyways, that is going to be my number 84 mogul. My number 83, I also do, I do not own this game. And I've played it a few times. Well, I feel like I've played it a few times this year. Um, and I finally, the last couple of times I played it, started to click a little bit. And this was a little bit of a tough one for me to grasp. But the way the game is played in the game, I can see I can see how just amazing it is. I just need to get a little bit better at understanding when a road is a road and when it can has to be a road. And that's going to be fresh fish uh whew, talk about a brain burning game i uh, got to play like i said got to play it a few times this year i uh, got uh i played it a long time ago and then recently uh james from dads on a map podcast he retaught this to me and i still was like i don't even know what's going on and then another friend of mine joe he got it and then we you know i got to play it a few more times and i finally kind of understand it. i don't know if i could sit down and teach it or be like oh yeah that's a road still tough a little bit on that for me and but i still enjoy it it's really cool you're trying to put your different you're putting your tokens out on the board and you have to do like an auction to get them there and you're just trying to get them as close as you can to like the like the ice cream as close as it is to the ice cream shop i don't even the theme is irrelevant i guess but um and however many spots that is going to be your score and you're looking for the lowest score absolutely great game um and this is if you get them, this is Friedman Fries, and obviously you can see with the F name, uh, probably in my opinion, well, in my opinion, I think that's my highest Friedman Fries. I enjoy Power Grid. It's probably one of those that just kind of missed the top 100, but uh, Fresh Fish, great game. Check that one out. So that was my number 83. So my 82, I'm going to cheat a little bit. My list, I'll do whatever I want, right? Okay. So I have a number 82. I have a little box card game called Coloretto. Uh, they made a bigger box version of this, like it was called Zularetto, I believe. Um, but this little box, card box, Coloretto, a great game. I really like busting this out with some new gamers because it's simple, yet has a lot of great strategy. You basically on your turn can either flip a new card out, a new chameleon and put it in a row, or you can take a row. And so it's really tricky on that sense. But good, small box, easy to teach new players. Which brings me to the other one. This is the other one that I find, and I just mentioned it a couple seconds ago, that's No Thanks. Another quick, simple game that I can bring out with people who maybe are not, you know, super great gamers. Not great gamers, just newer to gaming. And I, it's a super nice, quick, small box game. And so both of these are going to kind of just float into my, you know, hey, it depends on what crowd I got or whatever. But these are great games, small little box games. And so... Uh, yeah, like I said, I'm cheating. Number 82, Colorado Slash. No thanks. And now to finish off. So we got the one game. I don't think I screwed any of the numbers up this time. Well, let's keep, I hope that doesn't happen again. So my last game, this is another one of those games that it takes, a, you know, I, I'm not going to play this necessarily with some of my heavy gaming friends, you know, that I can play some of my the heavier you know, whether that be a splatter or a coin or whatever, you know, those games are, are reserved for them. But when it comes to, once again, I would say, uh, I don't even want to say newer gamers, my wife for one person, but people, who, good strategy. And I'm going to say at number 81 is going to be Azul. For one thing, they look beautiful, right? I mean, they are just absolutely gorgeous games. But I'm going to be a little more specific with this one because I'm going to say for sure my one that's truly at 81 is going to be Azul Queen's Garden. And I'll say this one I feel like is the heaviest, maybe the crunchiest of the Azuls. 
uh, you know, I've had gaming friends that have played this that are like, wow, that is, that's really crunchy and really thought. Now, it's nothing more than you're grabbing tiles and trying to, you know, put your tiles on your board just like you are in basic Azul. But it just has a little bit more crunch to it than just the basic Azul of how it was played. Um, but still, basic Azul is a great game. These, these games, you know, they don't jump up into being top games of, you know, lots of people because they're just average games or whatever. Azul has strategy in it. It has thoughts in it. And when you get done, it's all pretty and beautiful. So uh, I feel like I'm defending Azul for some reason. I don't know why. So I'm just going to say number 81 is going to be Azul and more specifically for me, the Queen's Garden. All right, so there we had it. We got through number 91 through 81, and you know what? I'm just going to keep on rolling. Uh, so the next video you'll come out, you'll see we'll, we'll jump into number 80. Um, for those of you who maybe didn't see the last one, uh, what I'm doing is I'm kind of rolling through this until our podcast comes out, uh, which will have uh, the top uh, 25 games of all time. Um, on there, but I'll still then put them out on video time after video time video after that uh, podcast drops. So they'll all be here. Uh, so that's really it. If you are enjoying these videos, please hit that like and subscribe. And other than that, everybody have a tremendous, tremendous rest of your day.